The hottest comic books in the world, over $100,000 just traded hands on the internet. And let's talk about them. Number 10 on the list, Superman 233, Neil Adams, the breaking of the chains. One of the most iconic Superman covers of all time from 1971. Over $1,000 in sales just took place. And we have some highlights Sales that exceeded the recent 12-month average is what lands comics on our list. The 6.0 is up 16%, 6.5, 12%, 7.5, 21%, and the 8.5 just clocked in its year-high sale going for $399, all because of James Gunn whose Superman movie will arrive next year, July 11th, 2025. Many believe that it's going to be groundbreaking, to say the least, much like he did with Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad. Movie hype or not, this book is always wanted and always coveted. It's an extremely powerful cover, and it's a great way to get this breaking of the chains without having to buy the Golden Age version in Superman number 11. Now, if you want to see great covers like that on an easy database, check out the Key Collector app. Use Code Tom 101. You unlock a free two-week subscription of the app and get access to like all the special categories that'll help you save and make money. But the majority of the app is free, and you can look at the entire database for free and learn every cover to every comic that's not just worth knowing, but what exists for you to shop and consider. Support this show while we chat about number nine on the list because, oh, it makes me want to look at other comic books. Uncanny X-Men 266. 16 sales above the 12-month average for $3,869. This is the second appearance of Gambit, his first cover appearance, and first chronological appearance of Gambit in story, in continuity. This has been on here 10 times this year already. It's the only book left on this list that has anything to do with Deadpool Wolverine. And let's take a look at these numbers. Four copies and a 9-2 outsold the average one at a high of 32% for $225. Six copies and a 9-6 outsold with a year high sale of $350. And that's up 47%. And the 9-8 up 12% with a $700 sale. Which is interesting because the last sale in a 9-8 was $610. People are paying within $100 right now for that 9.8 because they don't care, because they believe that there's a chance that Channing Tatum will reprise the role. He's gunning for it. He's hoping for it. Well, we move on to number eight on the list with Ghost Rider number one. Check this out. Only four sales, but a total of $14,500 have moved. And that's just off of like publicly recorded online sales. Let's jump into it. 4.5 up 8%, 6.019%, 7.5. Someone paid $570 for an 8% increase. And then we have a 9.8 that's sold. There's only been a few sales of this book at that grade this year. And it just sold for the highest it did all year for $13,200. That's up 23%. There are only 54 copies of a 9.8. I would have said this book is probably closer to an 11 maybe a $12,000 book. And we're talking white pagers too, but it's so damn nice. It's such a classic book and people clearly think that Ghost Rider is happening. Listen to this quote. Brad Winderbaum, the executive producer for streaming television and animation over at Marvel, was asked, if you can green light any series, what would it be right now in this moment? His response, I want to do Danny Ketch era of Ghost Rider. I mean, it doesn't even matter that the community is demanding Ghost Rider. You know the producers and the creators are gunning for it. Here at 7, courtesy of Disney+, Plus, Fantastic Four number 94. First appearance of Agatha Harkness, six sales, $1,000 spent this week above the 12-month average. This is one of those few occasions when a book is hot as hell that you can look at the list and go, damn, I need to go maybe pick one up because it's so cheap that it's trending. Because the hype is moderate. I mean, the 4.0, you can get for $89. Someone just bought it for $89. Bucks. So you can get a 7.5 for $200. Someone paid $225 for an 8.5. That's up 7% on a book that came out in 1970. And the show is awesome. But according to critics, we're looking at a 53% viewer rating. Comparing that to Penguin that just dropped this past week, which was absolutely excellent, 89%. So it's not doing as good as I think it needs to be to cause a spike in the collectible, making it a prime time to purchase if you dig the character, the show, or the book. This book has always been a minor key in the realm of Fantastic Four books, and this show is now starting to elevate that just a hair more. Nothing grand, but 
It's still something that now people can chase and acquire and have it have more purpose, which is great. Now, this Penguin show, as excellent as it is, guess what? There's not a single Penguin book on this list. So despite the fact that it had worse of a rating, the FF94 is here. So I'm excited to see Penguin books eventually, God willing, because that's great to see DC on this list. But it's not here yet. Support what we do directly. I want to send you comic books every month. It's very simple. Go to ComicTom101.com. Join the mystery mail call. Four to five comics in every single box for only $34.99. And I have some guaranteed exclusives going out to every single member. I'm going to tell you one of them right now is NYX X23 on the cover by Peach Momoko. Trinity Comics exclusive, baby. Worth more than the box is going for right now. And you can secure it while supplies last. Let's talk about Red Hulk. Hulk number one at six. No surprise because this movie is going to be fantastic. I'm trying to convince myself, but I think it's true. It's happening on Valentine's Day, dude. Well, duh. Red Hulk, love, bring your date. That's exactly what you want to do on Valentine's Day. Nothing says romance like MCU. And Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> that barrel-chested god is... <laughs> Anyways, nine sales <laughs> over the 12-month average. Over $2,000 spent for this book, and that's cover A only. I am all for strength in the marketplace. I love it when books sell well. But looking at some of these numbers, I do have to question how much people are spending. A 9.6 sold for $250. That's up 80% for a year-high sale. That's crazy to me for this modern book and how many are in this grade, if not better. Because a 9.8 sold for $329. That's up 23%. Six copies outsold the 12-month average in a 9.8. Yo, people have been spending closer to $100 for a 9.6 and closer to $250 for a 9.8. And they ain't stopping. Don't be the person setting up that new peak point. Buy at the average or lower if you can. We saw the Wizard World variant, 9.8, sell for $200. That's up 16%. And the Hero Initiative variant in a 9.8, Go for 385. That's up 15%. Across the board, whatever version we get, this book is on the rise. January 2025, so just months prior to the release of this movie, there's going to be a new Sam Wilson comic book coming out. And it's going to feature the antagonist, Red Hulk. They're going to go up against each other. Red Hulk's doing some like security stuff, and it's going to cause a ruckus. But notice who's on this cover. That is Eli Bradley. We have no confirmation that Eli Bradley is going to go full Patriot in the movie, why would Marvel be featuring him on the cover and in this book? Are they trying to tell us something? I feel Marvel usually does things like this with purpose. So potentially there's an opportunity there to pick up a Young Avengers one with his first appearance and in a really down market right now. So if you're open to it, check it out. Let us know. Hopefully you hit a home run here February 14th. Young Avengers 1 was trending well above six to $700 for quite a long time. 9-8 sales put it under $250. Seems soft to me with a lot of potential. Number five on the list, Avengers 55. Ultron's back on the list. Yeah, James Spader, sure, but we're not getting Vision Quest until 2025. There's a lot of time between now and then. But this is a Silver Age book from 1968. That saw five sales this past week above the recent 12-month average hitting about $1,000 in money's moved, which means that this book is affordable because lower grade copies are selling and it's adding up to making it a very hot book in the middle of our list this week. Consider it, but also don't be shy to be patient right now. 6.5 up 37%, 7.0 up 5%, 7.5 up 28%, 8.0 up 19%. Every one of those grade points I just said, you can acquire for under 2 hundred dollars right now dude was in a movie 9.2 sold for 340 dollars shout out mcfarland logan an increase of 10 percent and i got called out in the comments for not expressing about this book how major of a villain ultron truly is in the like marvel scope which totally makes sense i mean to pick up one of the most prolific villains in all of comics for $200 or less in an 8.5 potentially, that's that's amazing to do. Which brings us to my favorite book on the list this week, Daredevil number one. First appearance of Karen Page and Foggy Nelson. You always do. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you present it that way? I always do it. I love saying their name before Matt Murdock, but it is the first appearance of Daredevil. That doesn't help any at all either. <laughs> well, yeah, you got one sitting right in front of you. Comic fam, if you like the video, this guy, I'm going to get him to grade it. So you have to hit that button. 
Spoiler, he's going to grade it regardless. We have $31,000 in sales that just took place in seven days on this Silver Age blue chip key. The 4.0 just hit its year high sale, selling for $31.50, up 11%. The 4.5 about matched what it's been going for, sold for $3,300. The 5.0 sold for $3,849, up 3%. And the 9.0 just sold for $21,012, an increase of 6%. We have Daredevil Born Again coming early next year. We're going to be in Hell's Kitchen at New York City Comic Con. We expect to hear some updates that are probably going to get a lot of people hyped about Daredevil. So I grabbed my Daredevil one because it's on this list. I wanted to read it, and then I thought about grading it here so let's go through this first appearance of daredevil with a spider-man on the front cover too which is a great selling point and we're going to go through here and i'm going to kind of talk about it so first thing obviously put the tape on the side of the bag so you don't accidentally tape your front cover we got that tape pull you want to avoid tape pull now this is a low grade copy, so this is not something I need to be extra delicate with. I'm not gonna do anything to manhandle this book. What are some of the first things that you look at when you are grading a comic book, Jeff? So the first things I do when I grade a book is look at the front cover, I look at the back cover, and I start going to the interior front cover and the interior back cover just to check how secure it is to the staples and any big pieces missing. And then I'm gonna count the pages. And I want to make sure for a Silver Age book, you're going to have nine to the middle, including the cover, and nine from the middle to the back, including the back cover. So 18 total pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine got me to the middle. Check out the staples. I got to look for color touch, glue, hard spots, anything like that. And because your boy's prepared, you may want to use this. So we're using a black light to pick up the color changes, if any, on this cover from either paint, colored pencil, marker, some substance that maybe was added to this cover, front or back. It seems to be a clean book. I don't see any color touch on here. I don't feel any glue on here. This book was taken apart, and I can tell because there's tape down the entire middle of the spine. So these staples were removed fanned out the book, they taped the centerfold staple holes so that the centerfold is now attached and resecured. This book to me is a 2.5 blue label. There's no restoration. The tape is just regular scotch tape. It's not archival tape, which would be considered restoration. There's no glue here. And these look like the original staples just placed back into the book neatly. Real quick, I have an unclaimed ASM 41 giveaway that we are going to be redrawing this next week. We used to have members email us to participate. That didn't work because no one checks their emails. But we now have an SMS group that you can join by going to comictom101.store. You put your phone number in. We won't spam you. We'll just let you know about like cool stuff that we're dropping. And we will be able to contact you if you win. That's how we source our giveaway winners now. And it's the only way that it actually works. So if you want a chance to win an ASM 41, first appearance of the Rhino, join our SMS group and we'll announce the winnings next trending list. I don't know why I'm so excited about it, but this book has been dethroned from number one. Four weeks in a row at number one. To number three, Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number eight. The origin of the black suit. 20 different sales took place, however, and over $6,700 changed hands. I feel strongly that this is going to happen in the Venom movie. It feels like a missed opportunity if you don't. You think that Peter Parker's gonna show up maybe in the post credit scene? They can't do null like they've done other villains and just like half ass it. He's gonna just be in like the later end of the movie to kind of set up this next big phase. I mean, they're bringing in a god. Null cannot be a one and done, and you cannot do this right without Peter Parker adopting that suit. Three copies outsold the average in a 92, one up 26% for $235. Five copies outsold in a 96, one up 43% for $370 sale. The 98 sold for $600. That's 19% higher than the 12 month average and four copies outsold that average in a 98. The new stand 98 outsold for $1,100 was the average $1,019 up 8%. People clearly think this is gonna happen and they got me. 
Like I was not as excited about this movie prior to seeing Null and the rumors that it may actually be Norman Reedus and that they're going to be setting us up for something multiversal, something that may lead us into the greater MCU and take Venom and put Peter Parker on the same damn screen. This is a opportunity for a mulligan. Who cares what movies have failed over at Sony? They've had some strong ones and they all had to do with Spider-Man. And we're talking about Spider-Man joining Venom right now. Number two on the list is Marvel Super Heroes 20. This has been on and off the list, but still been pretty strong in demand. We had nine sales this week above the 12-month average for a total of $17,175. And one of those is a massive record breaker. Two of those are actually massive record breakers. And we have multiple year-high sales. The four or five-year high, 258, up 44%. The 6-0-year high, 325, up 32%. The 7-0-year high, $500, up 46%. The 7.5 sold for less, $420, up 6%. And the 8.0 sold for $550, up 7%. Then we saw a 9.6 sell and a 9.8. The 9.6 last sold for its height in 2020 for $1,700. Brace yourself for an 88% increase, now selling for $3,200. We call that the Robert Downey effect. The 9.8 last sold in 2020. Whoa, 2014. Excuse me, this book is a freaking ghost. It went for $1,100. It just went for $11,400, an increase of 936%. There's only five of these in a 9.8. So when I look at the 11400 to me, for a book that I really don't like, to be honest, I feel like that is a fair price for it and what it should be worth. Much more than that, I really would have to question that number because of just... Really what the book is, it's cool and all, but there's a lot of cool doom out there. What do you think about that price? Do you agree with the Golden Age Guru? Hit the like and subscribe. Follow him on Instagram. He just did a dynamite sale this last week with my dad, Comic Pops, and Milky Comics. I was sick all week. I couldn't be there, but I will be at the next one. You don't want to miss it. The number one hottest book in the world is a modern comic book written by Donnie Cates, drawn by Ryan Stegman. Donnie, come back came out in 2018, and it's the first appearance of Null. Venom number three, 80 plus sales just took place in the last seven days, dethroning Secret Wars 8 and landing this book at the number one spot with over $15,000 worth of money's moved. And that is just cover eight. This is one of the craziest books we've ever reported on. We had 21 9.6 sales. I mean, that's just bonkers. 80 total sales just above the 12 month average. I mean, wow, just freaking wow. I don't even know what to say. That's crazy. Someone paid 180 bucks and 21 other people purchased a 9.6, the highest increase of 28%. Then there's the second printing, 9.8 sold for 100 bucks, up 18%. Then you have the third printing, 9.8 sold for $435. That's a year high, increase of 30%. The 1 in 25 Molina variant, 9.8, six different copies sold, the highest for $500, up 55%. Eight different copies of the Scon trade dress in 9.8 sold, one up 26% for $137. The SDCC variant. The 9.8 sold for $200. That's up 43%. And then we have the standard 9.8. The highest it sold this past week was $307, up 48%. But 56 copies sold virtually. Clearly, the community not only believes in Venom 3 all of a sudden, but I don't think that's what it is. Like, they're excited. They're, they're like me. They're like, okay, Null's in this. We're going to watch it. What it truly is, is that in the last decade, the Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman run is one of the best modern comic book stories. And this right here is an opportunity if Sony even tries a little bit to adapt some greatness to the screen. These are people who have read the comic. They know the power of Null. They know what could be next in the Sony verse. And it's probably what the producers are hoping, the saving grace. Let me know what you think in the comic section below. Comic, comment. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said.